nobody likes taking tight ends early. You know, it, it's it's wonderful to have Travis Kelsey in your lineup, but it's not wonderful to use like the seventh overall pick on a tight end, right? Like I don't even like using my second, third, fourth round pick for the most part on tight end. So this video is going to throw some names at y'all that I think are mwah, beautiful picks outside of the top 10 ADP at the tight end position. I think these are must draft guys if you fade the tight end position. So just to start with, here are the 10 dudes that are going as the top 10 tight ends in ADP right now. We have Kelsey, Andrews, Hawkinson, Kittle, Goddard, Pitts, Waller, Ingram, Pat Fryermuth, David Njoku, and Dalton Schultz. So no one on that list will be on today's list. They're all dudes going after the top 10 tight ends. Y'all know what to do next. Tuck our shirts in. Stop the yelling. Flex up. First guy on this list, Chiggy Baby. Chigozium Okonkwo. Tight end 11. Currently going 126th overall. He was a rookie last year and absolutely ripped in limited touches, in limited play time, limited snap counts for the Titans. And the Titans have less than nobody in terms of weapons on that offense. Derrick Henry, it's the hopeful skeleton of Traylon Burks, who I think a lot of the argument I made for him in the wide receiver version of this video, which I will link down below for y'all, I will reiterate for Chiggy. But Chiggy was unlike Traylon Burks in the fact that when he did get on the field, he was dynamite, efficient, and ranked amongst the league leaders at tight end in many, many different categories. First off, he's a player that is electric with the ball in his hands. I remember watching him coming out of school. He was very raw. He was similar to Jonu Smith, right? And it feels like they were trying to recapture what Jonu Smith was going to be after they absolutely flopped on that. Chiggy is very athletic. He was a raw prospect who you get the ball in his hands and he makes plays because he is so damn athletic. He finished with the fifth most yards after contact amongst tight ends. He only had 32 receptions. Uh, the other four that finished above him, 60 or more catches. So overall, 32 catches, top five in yards after contact. The other guys had almost double the amount of catches. That's how electric he is with the ball in his hand. I will say he's a low floor player. He could absolutely drop out. He could absolutely fall down to the next floor, right? He's a dude that relies a lot on athleticism. Could be scary. Someone could overtake him. Someone's a better blocker. Maybe they, they want him on the field more. So I would say if you're going to take Chiggy, I would also take another later round tight end that you're confident will get a little bit more volume. But again, he could, he could without a doubt, be the number two on this team in total targets. Like Traylon's probably going for like a buck 30, but Chiggy can definitely get up in that 80, 90 range. And a dude like Chiggy who makes huge plays when you get the ball in his hands with 80 to 90 targets, going to be problematic. This tweet from Marcus Mosier, Conquo ranked number one in yards per outrun last year. Number one in yards after the catch per reception. Number four in receiving grade versus single coverage. Now, those are really impressive. However, I will say this kind of stuff almost always comes back to us and bites us in the ass when a guy's like really, really good on super limited sample size. Like this shit happened with Jonah Smith. This shit happened with OJ Howard. This happens over and over and over again. But they're, they're dudes worth taking the shots on because they have shown that they can do this now with a bigger volume size with a bigger sample size if they get it done they're going to be elite tight ends and we do it because it's just fucking fun all right and chiggy is fun as fuck and you look back at his numbers even deeper from last year 11th in average depth of target 7.9 so that's not you know a huge number second in target rate 33.3 percent first in yards per reception he was also third in contested catch rate so if the ball comes in his vicinity He's coming down with it. His mitts are bringing that shit home. And you just look at his profile. He's athletic as shit. A 4 5 2 40 yard dash. Austin Hooper and his 60 targets, 41 catches, 444 yards, and two touchdowns are out of there. Okay. And you look at the depth chart. It's not like you have these rookies coming in, like Michael Mayer goes to Las Vegas and he's got Austin Hooper behind him, who's not good, but he'll be annoying because he's a veteran and he'll take targets away from him. With Shiggy, Josh Weil, Kevin Rader who's not on a single fucking person's radar, Travon Wesco. Like there's nobody here to take these targets from both the tight end position and the rest of the positions. All right. So Chiggy is a dude that absolutely worth drafting at the tight end position. If you fade the top 10, same with this rookie, we're going to get some backlash on this one, but Dalton Kincaid, 
I love this fucking kid, all right? He's a tight end 14. He was the first tight end drafted in the NFL draft this year, 136 overall. I am just, I'm, I'm feral. I go feral when I see his fucking name pop up on the queue, all right? I made an entire video about him pre-NFL draft about just how much I loved him and his, you know, st- statistics and analysis at the college level were elite. I will drop the link to that video as well. This man is special at the position. I'm telling you, he just moves differently. Everyone likes to hype up tight ends that are like athletic and run a fast 40 yard dash. Those guys, fine. They could run fast in underwear, but they don't move that fluidly. They don't move from side to side that well. Don Kincaid is literally a wide receiver in a tight end's body. From a beat reporter over at ESPN, he's the player I kept hearing about. He's the type of player that week one is going to have an immediate impact on this team from a different Bills beat reporter. I can't wait to see Don Kincaid on the field for the Bills. That big slot role that he will play will be crucial to this year's team. And then you have Bills players, Von Miller coming out. This Don Kincaid kid is insane. This is a point that I try to make to y'all all the time. The hype throughout the summer, you know, if it's negative, that becomes a problem because no one ever talks negatively about their players. So if you get negative hype, negative mindset, that's what we're thinking. But positive hype comes out all the time. However, if you start hearing it from everywhere, where there's smoke, there is fire. All right. So we start hearing it from beat reporters, we start hearing it from players, we start hearing it from coaches. This kid's going to be a problem. As Von Miller said, I'll just leave with that quote. Dalton Kincaid kid is insane. And I've referenced you guys to Mojo before, but Mojo has career player prices. It's beautifully designed. Go download it from the App Store. Don Kincaid's career share price right now is seven eighty. He's right underneath Pat Firemuth. He's forty cents below Darren Waller right now. He's by far and away the highest priced rookie tight end. He's at seven eighty. Michael Mayer is the next closest one at six eighty five. So they are extremely bullish on Don Kincaid right now. They also have, if you're a college football head, if you are someone that is following Dynasty, Devi, whatever, they just released prices for a shitload of college players. They obviously have the popular ones like Marvin Harrison Jr., Brock Bowers, but they've got some of the lesser known dudes that a lot of you Devi guys probably know. We got Trevor Etienne. We got the blood of Travis, but they have all the prices there. So go check out Mojo. The app It is free to download right now. You could play it if you're in New Jersey. You could actually invest into your favorite fucking players, the college players, NFL players, all that kind of sheesh. Uh, but if you're not in New Jersey, you can't actually invest, but you can download and look at prices. It's another tool. It's another resource to use in the dynasty landscape. Let's keep moving down. Mr. Jawan Johnson of the New Orleans Saints. He is the tight end 16 currently going off the board as the 153rd player. They re-signed him to a two-year extension this offseason. They obviously want him to be a part of the offense, and it makes sense given the fact that he just set career highs across the board last year. 42 catches, 508 yards, seven touchdowns in just 12 starts. And I don't think people realize, like, Jawan Johnson, he scored so many touchdowns that people started to just think he was a red zone weapon. He was a guy they just put in to uh, put on the field at that part of the field just to be a red zone specialist. He is really fucking athletic. He ran a uh, a sub 4 6 40, 6 4 2 30. So he's built like a big wide receiver, a big slot wide receiver. His athletic his athleticism is crazy across the board, way above average in every sort of test that he had. Now, Foster Moreau is the biggest stick in the spoke here, obviously, right? They bring in Foster Moreau, but Johnson last year was way better than Foster Moreau has been throughout any of the four seasons that he's been in the NFL. Juwan Johnson's only been in the NFL for three years. We got some beat reporters coming out. Chris Olave really looks comfortable and confident out there. Him, Rashid Jaheed, and Juwan Johnson might have been the best players from the three weeks of OTAs. Johnson also ranked really high, like Jiggy, on a lot of lists last year. He was number six in average depth of target, so he was a downfield playmaker. He was not just used in the red zone. Seventh most snaps from the slot and sixth in yards per route run from the slot, behind only Jiggy, Kelsey, Pat Firemuth, Mark Andrews, Hawkinson, then Juwan Johnson. That's a damn good fucking list. He could also move with the ball in his hands, seventh in missed tackles forced per attempt on those snaps. So he is running downfield routes. He's catching touchdowns. When he catches the ball, he could do a lot with the ball in his hands, all right? So I really, really like him a lot. Uh, I could see him playing somewhat of like a Darren Waller light in Derek Carr's offense. Tight end number four on this list, Trey McBride of the Arizona Cardinals, 171st overall, the tight end 20. Let's not forget that he was the first tight end drafted in last year's draft. Zach Ertz tore his ACL and MCL in week 10 last year. They did not add anyone notable to the tight end room in Arizona. They got rid of DeAndre Hopkins. The Cardinals are very clearly in a rebuild And at Zach Ertz's age, I have absolutely no expectations for him going into this year. If he ended up scoring a total of like 60 fantasy points this year, wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. While they're in a rebuild, like the only real solidified weapon they have on offense is Hollywood Brown. All of their other weapons are tiny. It's Greg Dortch. It's Rondell Moore. 
They're all mini me. They're all munchkin size, except for the rookie Mike Wilson, who I, I love Michael Wilson. But again, these are the only two big body receivers. Wouldn't be surprised if Trey McBride is super heavily involved uh, in the red zone. I think he deserves another chance after like a down rookie year. Can't forget he was the fucking John Mackey Award winner in college as the nation's top tight end. This dude is a phenomenal athlete, and he averaged almost seven and a half half PPR points per game last year after Ertz went down. And that's right around that like tight end one border, tight end 10, 11, 12, 13 in that range. And I absolutely think that's within the range of outcomes for a dude like McBride who they do not have any targets in that offense. All right. So keep a close eye on Zach Ertz's uh, rehab, his age. I, again, I'd really be surprised if he was even ready and back for week one. Wouldn't be surprised if he ended up on the pup list. So Trey McBride is a dude who I think just by volume and just involvement in that offense is going to be a good pick in fantasy this year. I also like Irv Smith of the Cincinnati Bengals. I know this is like a fucking pipe dream, but he's going 173rd overall as the tight end 21. We've been like waiting for this to happen forever. He keeps getting hurt and then he had his chance and he wasn't good. I'm not really banking on him to be a thing in my lineup this year, but I'll be taking some shots on him if I have a tight end. Like if I have Chiggy, maybe Irv Smith is my other tight end. Probably not. Maybe not a good combination because they both have low floors, but you get the point. Irv Smith is still a relatively young, high upside, very athletic tight end that Proved to be really good when he got a chance in Minnesota when Kyle Rudolph would go down. It would only be like one or two games at a time, but I still think he could be a problem in the Cincinnati Bengals offense where Hayden Hurst was really, really good for them last year. And I think Irv Smith is more explosive and probably better weapon than Hayden Hurst was. However, Hayden Hurst is actually my number six player on this list. He goes to the Carolina Panthers. He is currently getting drafted 205th overall as the tight end 25. This is one of the most like under the radar signings of the offseason. He gets a three-year $21.5 million contract, okay? Like, what else do they have here? It's like Ian Thomas and, 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 and Tommy Tremble who have done nothing up to this point in their career. I would say Hayden Hurst is recovering from hernia surgery, so that's kind of a red flag right now. Apparently, he's back running, but I would keep a, I would keep a close eye on Not that you have to keep a fucking close eye on the tight end 25 in fantasy football, but Hayden Hurst is a dude who was good last year for Cincinnati, as I just said. He is a veteran. He has put up big numbers in the NFL before. He's played on multiple teams, and he's been useful on multiple teams. And he goes to Carolina where Bryce Young comes in as the quarterback, and they, he has no established rapport with any weapon on the team, right? It's like... Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, Jonathan Mingo, like any of these guys could end up Terrace Marshall, like any of these guys could end up being target hogs in this offense, but so could Hayden Hurst. And who's for sure going to be out there on 80 to 90% of the snaps? This guy. I couldn't say that for sure for any other player that the Carolina Panthers have brought in on offense this year. Hayden Hurst, I feel like not high upside, but if he ended up finishing as like the tight end nine or the tight end 11, just based on getting 85 targets and catching 65, 70 passes, scoring five times, like, wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. Zayden Hurst, I feel like, is a dude that is going to play way more than basically every fantasy tight end picked within the next 10 spots of him. So I like him. And I love, I love, love Isaiah Likely, the Baltimore Ravens tight end, 28, 215 overall. There's something in my gut telling me that Likely will be a starter for some portion of the season. And when he, I'm, there's no, I'm, I'm so confident that He's the best backup tight end in the league at this point. If Mark Andrews goes down or gets hurt or whatever, Isaiah Likely is automatically inserted into your lineup. Like right now, I ask you this, and the fact that you're going to even have to think about the answer is pretty telling. If Mark Andrews goes down tomorrow and he's out for the season, who would you rather have as your starting tight end in fantasy? Kyle Pitts or Isaiah Likely? I've, I'm... I'm not like I'm not auto I'm not auto fucking smashing the draft button on Kyle Pitts in that situation. I'm just not doing it. He is the league's best backup tight end and in an offense that uses their tight end so heavily. I like Todd Munkin coming in. This should be a much more pass heavy offense. And they were a team at Georgia where Todd Munkin just came from where they utilized two tight ends, Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington. OK, only a two game sample size, of course, while Isaiah likely played without Mark Andrews, but he was fucking awesome. 11.6 half PPR points, nearly 14 full PPR points, four and a half receptions, a touchdown every other game, nine targets and 63 receiving yards. What tight end does that? None. He's almost definitely more of like a waiver wire ad to keep an eye on or a last round 17th, 18th round best ball pick, but he is my third highest owned tight end on underdog right now. So I love him. You can see my list is littered with dudes like this. Uh, I think Jelani Woods is kind of interesting out there in Indy, but I don't really know what his upside is. He's Cool player, but I doubt he's ever going to be like a high volume type guy. I do think this is this is a really interesting year for tight ends because there are a lot of rookies that got drafted that are 
highly drafted, high draft capital, super athletic, and they go into situations where they could be be the starter immediately, right? You look at Sam Laporta in Detroit. They got rid of, they got rid of TJ Hawkinson. They fill it with another Iowa dude who's built similarly, who's just as athletic, who's a good pass catcher, like very similar dudes. So Sam Laporta is for sure a guy to keep an eye on. Luke Musgrave out in Green Bay. I also like Tucker Craft too. They drafted two tight ends, I think in the second and fourth round, I want to say. Musgrave was the earliest draft pick of the two of them, so he probably gets a shot at being a starter, but they got nothing at tight end there. So they're going to have to start a rookie tight end who will probably get targets. And then Michael Mayer, I, again, I, I think like Austin Hooper and OJ Howard are both there. Uh, so I've never seen a guy more that's going to be more annoying to a rookie tight end than Austin Hooper. Like we're going to be begging for Austin Hooper to leave so that Michael Mayer can break out for the next like four years. So I'm not really in on him for redraft whatsoever, but I think going with a couple late round rookie tight ends this year is not the worst strategy. Okay. So if you're like me and you hate using those early round draft picks on tight ends, these are dudes you should be targeting after tight end 10 in fantasy drafts. We've also done this video for both wide receivers and running backs. We'll put that on the screen now as well as in the description. So go check those videos out as well. I will be live for a full underdog stream tomorrow. So make sure you're both subscribed and got notifications turned on for the channel. Then you can come hang out and draft with me. All right. I love y'all. Goodbye.